Hey, this is Chris Franco, and you are listening to Compound Money Quietly, the CMQ Investing Podcast. In this episode of Compound Money Quietly, we're going to create complete clarity about what a mental model is in context of the multidisciplinary approach. The following quote comes from Charlie Munger. I've long believed that a certain system, which almost any intelligent person can learn, works way better than the systems that most people use. What you need is a latticework of mental models in your head. And with that system, things gradually get to fit together in a way that enhances cognition. However, my particular approach seldom seems to get through, even to people of immense ability. One of the reasons I believe this approach, as Charlie said, seldom gets through, is because there's confusion about what a mental model is. And I know that firsthand. You probably know we have an Instagram page called at Charlie Munger Quotes. There's over, I think, close to 52,000 people who follow that. When I post a quote from Charlie where he discusses models or mental models, there's always comments and I always receive direct messages asking for a definition. And this is despite there being an ever-growing library of content online about mental models. Here's an example of one of the quotes I recently shared and the comment that followed. The quote is, you've just got to learn 100 models and a few mental tricks and keep doing it all your life. And one of the very first comments asks, could you explain what he meant by models? And I replied, absolutely not. And then I blocked that person because I was offended. <laughs> I'm having to keep that in. Obviously, that's not what I did. I let them know. I think I said we would do an episode of the podcast about it. And we're now we're doing it. But that's not the only reason we're doing this. There was one other example. I ran a poll a few weeks back on Instagram stories asking our followers if they could explain what a mental model is to someone else. And 62% of people said no. So there's a real issue here and it's understandable. I'm gonna record a bonus section of this podcast that I'll put up later where I break down why I think people are confused. But let's start with the definition. This is our working definition of a model as in the 100 models Charlie says everyone should have in their head. It goes like this. A model is an accepted idea or concept that agrees with reality. An accepted idea or concept, you'll find it in a textbook. You know, that's where they live. Open up a textbook, that's where you're gonna find the models. And Charlie actually never calls them mental models in that 1994 speech. He does later, so it's wasn't something that just took on a life of its own, but you'll hear me say model, sometimes mental model, but we're still just saying model. Speaking of models, Charlie also says the models have to come from multiple disciplines because all the wisdom is not to be found in one little academic department. A few years later, during another lecture, Charlie said, quote, and you need the models, not just from one or two disciplines, but also from all the important disciplines. You need the best 100 or so models from microeconomics, physiology, psychology, mathematics, hard science, and engineering, and so on. Now let's go off the cuff a little bit here. I wanna show you what this looks like when you're thinking with multiple models about something that's happening, or you're trying to explain why something is the way it is. I published a visual on our newsletter at cmqinvesting.substack.com that everyone received where I share my visual diagram of this process or, or this method. The first step is to state an idea that you believe to be true. And this is what I wrote. A business must always do right by its customers. This is one of the keys to long-term success. The next step is to explain why you believe this is true in the most simple terms. I wrote this. Customers will not reward a business with their hard-earned money and loyalty if the business treats them poorly, it's reciprocity. So the next question in this process is, does your idea agree with reality? So my initial idea being a business must always do right by its customers and that this is one of the keys to long-term success. So let's start off by going into psychology. Robert Cialdini has a book called Influence that is a classic. It's one that 
Charlie is a enormous fan of, so much so that when he read the book, he gave Robert Cialdini one share of Berkshire Hathaway. This is a pretty funny quote. He says he did it to thank him for what he had done for me and the public. Incidentally, the sale by Cialdini of hundreds of thousands of copies of a book about social psychology was a huge feat, considering that Cialdini didn't claim that he was going to improve your sex life or make you any money. In the chapter of Influence about reciprocity, Robert Cialdini says that one of the reasons reciprocation can be used so effectively as a device for gaining another's compliance is its power. So we think about reciprocity in terms of needing to treat your customers really well because you want them to give you back what you're giving them. Physics, let's go to another academic discipline. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Another model from physics is the zeroth law of thermodynamics, and that states that if two systems are each in thermal equilibrium with a third, they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. Now, this took me a little while to get my head around. Uh, if you're curious to learn more, I always recommend just doing a Google image search of the concept because sometimes you'll immediately get a visual that'll help you understand what you're reading better. Now let's go to biology. There's a concept in biology called reciprocal altruism. And a definition would be, it's a behavior whereby an organism acts in a manner that temporarily reduces its fitness while increasing another organism's fitness with the expectation that the other organism will act in a similar manner at a later time. I mean, that's, it's like human reciprocity, right? It's exactly the same thing. And that's what this describes is this, this innate behavior is not just among humans, but actually all living things. Next, we have tit for tat, which comes from game theory, and it illustrates reciprocal altruism. I also wrote cooperation. This quote comes from the book Sapiens, another great book, by the way. Cooperation was one of the most important trademarks of Homo sapiens and gave it a crucial edge over other human species. By the way, I just love when books refer to humans like in the third person. <laughs> it's like, oh, the Homo sapiens. Like, it's like you feel, feel very powerful reading that. In business, we have customer centricity, which is a very important idea that's been adopted by a lot of successful brands. And this is a business strategy where the whole idea is putting your customer first is at the core of everything you do. And this is in order to provide a positive customer experience and build long-term lasting relationships. And the first company that comes to mind is Amazon. If you read Jeff Bezos' earliest letter to shareholders, he's constantly talking about customer centricity. And that never stops. I've actually done an analysis of, and don't ask me why, it's be for another, another conversation, but I've analyzed every single one of those letters and know that the most frequently used word definitively is customer. And you, but you also don't need to do that to know how customer centric Amazon is. It's a well-known fact that, I don't know if they still do it, but for a long time, you could not have a meeting at Amazon without an empty chair in the meeting that represented the customer. So now with all these ideas from all these different disciplines, and even an example from the world of business, I'm confident that my initial idea about treating your customers right, I feel like it is reality because it agrees with reality. That's just how the world really works. Now, I never want to think that we have anything figured out 100%. We can always be proven wrong. So something we should be on the lookout for is, are there any successful businesses that were successful for decades, not just, you know, they've had a good five or 10 year run that have treated their customers really poorly? It's something definitely to think about. Charlie Munger says the best thing a human being can do is to help another human being know more. If you feel like you know more as a result of listening to this episode, please share with a friend. Thank you again for listening. My name is Chris Franco. This is Compound Money Quietly, the CMQ Investing Podcast. I'll talk to you soon.